Hey there! Thanks for stopping by here at Nerd Amazing. I can't wait to show you the sweet action figure of Batman Duke Thomas from the DC Multiverse Tales from the Dark Multiverse action figure from McFarland Toys. And don't go anywhere, because at the end of this episode, I'm giving you a sneak peek showcase of the next collectible I'll be featuring here at Nerd Amazing. So, let's check out this Batman Duke Thomas packaging first, followed by the action figure here on Nerd Amazing. You can clearly see Duke Thomas behind the clear film. Can't wait to unbox that sweet guitar axe of his to have him start shredding some evil with it. There's also the DC Multiverse logo and figure name at the bottom. The top of the packaging has the McFarlane Toys logo with clear film at the top to allow more light to come through in order to highlight the figure in its box. The left side has logos and the figure name we just saw recently. The back of the box has a sweet toy photography shot of Duke looking out into the dark multiverse all armored up and ready to deal justice to those evil monsters. The right side again has the logos and the figure name we've been seeing so far, but now we get this Tales from the Dark Multiverse, the comic series title that this Duke Thomas Batman is based on. So let's go ahead and unbox this Dark Multiverse Duke Thomas Batman action figure now, as I honestly can't wait to pose him doing a power slide. Here is the packaging of the Batman Duke Thomas ready to unbox, so let's go ahead and do that now. So I like to go ahead and just flip them over and show you that it's held together by a little tape right here at the bottom, as you can see. And I've already pre-cut that. So I'll go ahead and open them up from the bottom, flip up the tabs, the sides, and I'll pull the figure out like so. And as you can see, he is form-fitted in clear plastic. Comes with, right quick, his art card shell with a cool collector's card. The figure stand, set that to the side right now. And as I just said beforehand, form fitted to a clear plastic shell where he's got his accessory, the figure. You can see he's got banding securing him here at the torso area. And I don't, oh yeah, right there at the feet as well. One here and one here. And his cape is thread through the back. So give me one second to get this figure ready to showcase to you. So here's the Batman Duke Thomas unbox. So let's go ahead and check out the figure. Here's the front, side, back, the other side, as well as the view from the top, and the view from the bottom. And you can see he has the display holes for the display stand that he comes with. So let's check out the articulation, starting with the head and working our way down to the feet. With the head, he has a nice 360 spin, like so. See if he tilts. He's got some tilt down and some tilt up as well. The tips of the helmet are rubber, are soft rubber, so you won't stab yourself there. Let's check out. Got a little tilt from side to side. That's very nice. Yeah, really not too bad articulation with the with the head. Let's check out the arms. He's got a nice T motion up to a certain point. Little restriction right here with the uh, cape mantle. Let's see if he has some shoulder articulation. About that far up and minimally back, again, because of the cape right here. Let's see, got some rotation right here at the biceps. Nothing there at the forearm. You've got articulation at the elbow as such. And the hands. Do spin around at a 360. Wrist go in, wrist go out. Let's check out the other one real quick. This one is more of the waving motion kind of style going up and downwards, but they do not go inwards and outwards. All right, let's just set him a reset. See if there's any torso. There's minor. Spin, but you're having restriction due to the soft rubber armor. So he's not really doing much of there. See if there's any forward crunch. Not really. There's a little bit, again, restricted to the armor. And a little bit more when you're tilting him back. So, uh, the cape, soft plastic. These are soft as well. So you won't hurt yourself and they won't break. That's nice. You can do a split really well. Legs can go 
forward to a point. This is actually uh, interesting. This part right here at this waist and around is soft plastic. Hmm, interesting. That's the first. Uh, the legs can go back. Let's see. No real minor articulation, minor rotation right there at that upper thigh, but not too much. Knees. Articulate very well, being able to bend again for both. No rotation at the calf area. Let's see, check out the feet. The point down, as you can see, the point up, they got the toe articulation. Let's see, they rotate really nicely, but there is, from what I could tell, no rocking, just rotation. Not too bad of a figure, I have to say. All right, let's go ahead and check out the accessories. As always with McFarland Toys, they do come with the display stand. And this one's got the DC logo in a gloss on top of the black. He's got the art card. Makes like so. If you want to pause the video, let me see if I can get this real close to you. You can read it. And feel free to pause that video to read the full thing. But yeah, very nice card there. And that's the artwork from the back of the box. This is a cool piece right here. His guitar axe. Really nice. Really, really nice. A lot of detail on the front. Not so much on the back, but you won't be seeing that too much. And hard plastic here, but this does bend to a point, so that way you won't break that portion. All right, let's go ahead and check out this figure size. This Batman Duke Thomas action figure is stated to be at 7 inches tall, or 17.78 centimeters for all my metric friends out there. Measuring the figure myself, he's closer to 8 inches tall due to how long the bat ears are on his helmet. I've placed Duke next to other size McFarlane toy figures to give you a sense of scale. So let's go ahead and place this Batman Duke Thomas action figure on the spinner now, so we can check out more monstrous details on this Monster Hunter style Batman and see what epic action poses we can put him in. This is such a unique looking Batman, not only due to the weapon accessory he carries, but foremost due to the unusual style armor he dons, which is made from dragon's hide. I will suggest using the accompanying display stand that the figure comes with, due to the top heaviness of this beefy figure and weight of his bat cape. The Batman style helmet is nicely done in a medieval monster hunter style. Having the striation marks in the face plate and bat ears gives the illusion that bone or hardened chitin was used. I am not a fan of the white trim used on the segmented helmet scales as it feels a bit out of place and a bit distracting. The upper body torso armor is exceptional and I just love the cracking and splitting effect of the leather segmented armor which encircles around Duke's Batman symbol. The same armor is used in part of his shoulder armor that incorporates into his shoulder mantle that attaches to the cape. And it's so cool that it comes together into what looks like part of a dragon's spine or from the upper part of a dragon spiked tail. The cape itself is exquisite looking with all the subtle textures and folds to it ending in this wicked pointed frill. I feel like this cape was made from part of a dragon's wings. The arms are pretty normal for a Batman figure I believe, but instead of the usual bat spikes that are attached to the forearm armor, you instead get these dragon spikes or quills coming out, which I really like. Then you have his teleportation utility belt, which I hate to say, I'm just not a fan of the paint use here. I feel like the front main teleportation buckle is a little too bright in color, causing your eyes to be drawn there first. I also think that the white trim used on the pouches on the utility belt's front side wasn't needed, as I feel like they're better looking unpainted. The peril axe is a crowning accessory to this figure. Honestly, it's why I bought this Batman. I mean, how metal does it look, a guitar fashioned into a literal axe? You can see the strings, fret, the tuner, Heck, even the whammy bar. A lot of detail went into this skull. The only issue that I have with this peril axe is I wish that they added the seven spots of colors to the circular nodes on the axe blades that represents each of the lanterns, just like in the comic book version. My goodness, Duke Thomas did not skip leg days with this figure sculpt. His legs are massive. Now we come to the boots that look like they're made from segmented dragon scale. In all honesty, I would love to have a pair of boots like these 
so I could use them for my Renaissance Fair costume. If you're enjoying what you're seeing so far and want to be part of the Nerd Amazing community so you can stay up to date when new episodes get released, consider subscribing to Nerd Amazing. Also, give that like button a click as it really helps out the channel. Plus, if you want to discuss this action figure with me, drop your comment below for me to respond back to. I am really digging the character description given of Duke Thomas from the McFarland Toys website, which reads, After traveling the different realities of the dark multiverse, Duke Thomas returned to his Earth to find the cosmic destroyer Barbados, now in his final form as a dragon, along with his other dragons of the back. With the help of some allies, Duke defeats Barbados and his forces, but the darkness still consumes this universe. Despite that ultimate loss, Duke does not stop his mission. Creating a bad suit of armor from the height of a defeated dragon, Duke takes a powerful peril axe and ventures into the dark multiverse alone to hunt any remaining monsters. I mean, seriously, this is one righteous monster hunter with a guitar axe. Please tell me someone made a real life peril axe that you can shred on. The peril axe was made or possibly stolen by Dick Grayson and is forged from the same metal materials that make the power rings. Later, Duke returns to his homeworld within the multiverse called Earth Metal after all but one of the multiverse worlds collapsed by Barbatos' death wave. Duke makes his sweet dragon hide armor mentioned earlier and equipped Nightwing's peril axe to shred some evil dragons. How metal is that? The peril axe has some sweet abilities such as sound manipulation, energy construct creation, and energy projection, which is a weapon that Duke is going to need going up against Barbados and his dragons of the back. Something interesting I discover, but no clue if it actually influenced or inspired the Peril Axe name for this guitar weapon. There's actually a company called Washburn Guitars that created a guitar series called Parallax that is for rock and metal guitars. Just putting that out there. I have to say, hands down, it was so much fun to showcase this McFarlane Toys Batman figure. Seriously, dragon height armor and a sweet metal axe guitar? What is not to love about this figure? Don't forget to check out the description below as I'll leave a link to the McFarlane Toys website so you can get more additional details over this Batman Duke Thomas figure. Here's my favorite part of the show where I get to give you guys a sneak peek of the next collectible I'm going to showcase here on Nerd Amazing. So, are you ready for it? It's going to be... Well, it's going to be the Star Wars Black Series action figure of General Grievous, such a classic villain from the prequel movies and the animated Clone Wars series. Want to check out more McFarland toys like these? Or maybe these collectibles are more your style. Well, thanks for joining me here on Nerd Amazing. And to all my Nerd Amazing fans out there, again I say to you, be passionate in what you do, share your passion with others, and be kind to one another, as this world can always use more goodness in it. This is Adam with Nerd Amazing, and I'll see you next time.